Good morning. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to comment on our quarterly financials as well as our full year financials for FY19. Uh, I am very pleased by the very robust performance put in uh, by all our businesses uh, in FY19. Uh, we have delivered a very strong Q4 and I am very pleased that we have actually uh, done extremely well in our biologics business where we have crossed the aspirational target set by ourselves for FY19 uh, by uh, exceeding the $200 million target. Uh, this actually is a reflect inflection point in our business because the biologics business has actually contributed significantly to the very strong improvement in the quality of earnings. We have seen a very good performance across our businesses and for the first time we are seeing our biologics business, our research services business and our small molecules businesses each contributing in excess of 1500 crores um, in terms of revenues. Uh, given the uh, strong margin uh, you know, contribution of biologics, we have also seen a very strong improvement in our margins across our uh, businesses. Uh, so this is something that I will give you more optics on when I give you a, uh, when I get into the numbers. But apart from that, I'm also very pleased to share with you that uh, as a part of our 40th anniversary commemoration, the board of Biocon has uh, recommended uh, the issue of a one is to one bonus uh, for Biocon shareholders. And the Biocon board has also recommended a pre-bonus one rupee per share a dividend payout uh, to our shareholders. So all in all, I think we've had a very, very strong uh, you know, quarter. We've ended the year on, a, on one of the best financials that we have delivered um, uh, you know, for the company. And I will now look, get into the numbers. So I will start with the quarterly numbers. Uh, consolidated revenue uh, for the quarter uh, grew 26% uh, to 1,557 crores from 1,237 crores last fiscal. Um, net profit for the quarter jumped 64% from 130 crores last fiscal to 214 crores uh, this fiscal. EBITDA increased 43% from 300 to 431 crores this fiscal. EBITDA margins uh, was at 28% uh, uh, versus 24% a year ago. And core EBITDA margins, which is really, uh, you know, net of uh, net uh, licensing, uh, forex impact and R&D expenses, uh, rose 500, uh, you know, rose from 26% to 34%. Uh, so a significant contribution uh, to margins and earnings improvement uh, for both uh, for this quarter. Uh, R&D expenses um, were at about 17% of uh, revenues excluding Sinjin and uh, were up uh, from, uh, you know, uh, we're up from 98 crores last fiscal to 166 crores this fiscal, which is a 70% increase in R&D expenses. Uh, this, of course, as you know, is a very important uh, integral part of our business because it is the R&D investments that are actually being uh, converted into the real large opportunities that we are now seeing uh, through our biologics uh, biosimilars business. So the investments we made in biosimilars um, many years ago are now paying back for us big time. Now coming to full year uh, financials, uh, we've seen a 31% uh, jump in our revenue revenues from 4,336 crores uh, in the previous fiscal to 5,659 5, crores uh, this fiscal. Um, as I mentioned earlier, three of our strategic business lines uh, re registered in excess of 1,500 crores each. 
and we've act these three businesses actually met their aspirational targets for FY19 as we had guided uh, many years, five years ago. Our net profit for the year soared 143 percent to uh, 905 crores. However, this did include an exceptional item and when you exclude for that ex uh, exceptional item, uh, it still registered a doubling of profits from 372 crores in the previous fiscal to 729 crores this fiscal. Uh, EBITDA rallied 49% uh, uh, from uh, 1035 crores last fiscal to 1538 crores this fiscal. And more importantly, EBITDA margins uh, improved uh, from 24% in FY18 to 27% uh, FY19, an improvement of 300 basis points. Core EBITDA margins improved and increased 500 basis points from 27% to 32% this fiscal. On an annual basis, net R&D expenses increased 34 percent to 290 crores at a net level. But at a gross level, we have actually expended 480 crores of R&D, representing 13 percent of our revenues. Now, um, coming to uh, business highlights for the quarter and for the year. Uh, we've seen a strong performance from our small molecules, biologics and research services business, both at a quarterly level and at a, a full year level. At a quarterly level, our small molecules business uh, increased 11% uh, uh, to 472 crores. And this actually was led with a good mix of API sales of our immunosuppressants and statins and also through our growth and ramp up of our statics, uh, statins generics business in uh, the US market. Uh, biologics business uh, grew significantly, 87% growth to 451 crores, uh, uh, largely uh, again from a good mix of uh, growth demonstrated by our biosimilars um, business in emerging markets as well as our biosimilars uh, business in developed markets, especially the US, where our new, la new Lasta biosimilar uh, or full filler is actually gaining good traction, uh, where Equivia has actually uh, indicated that this business is now tracking at almost 18% market share. Um, the biosimilar trastuzumab ogivri was just launched in the U European market, so this does not reflect big numbers from ogivri in the European market, and we expect this to now start, uh, you know, delivering for us uh, in the next fiscal. Branded formulations was very muted because we've had a, a, a big challenge in the UAE market where a, uh, a repricing uh, mandated by uh, the Ministry of Health has seen our generics business in the UAE take a big hit. Uh, we expect these headwinds to continue for the first half of next fiscal, but thereafter we expect to recover from this uh, kind of uh, challenge that we have seen in UAE. Uh, the India business, however, did, uh, did uh, 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 you know, generate some, you know, good growth and we expect the growth momentum to carry through next fiscal. But as I mentioned earlier, it was really the branded formulations business that only achieved 50% of their target and thereby basically uh, impacted the $1 billion aspirational target that we had set ourselves. Research services saw an excellent uh, performance this quarter, 30% year-on-year growth to 534 crores, first time that they've actually crossed the 500 crore milestone. And even at a PAT level, the research services business has generated 100 crores of PAT for the first time this quarter. Um, as I mentioned, the biologics business, of course, has been a great contributor to profitability to the biocons business. Um, when it comes to uh, highlights of the full year, I would like to basically uh, talk about the fact that uh, 
our uh, research services business again uh, was, had a stellar performance. Sinjin uh, announced a very, very strong performance in terms of its business uh, uh, business for FY19. Um, it actually it uh, contributed a very large uh, both top line and bottom line. 1,826 8, 1, crores, um, which was a 28% growth uh, at a revenue level. And uh, when you look at our uh, uh, biologics business, which really was a star performer, uh, both for the quarter and for the full year, 1,517 crores uh, was what the business uh, generated from the previous year's 770 crores, which is really a doubling of business uh, at a revenue level. Uh, we commercialized pig, peg fill, grass stem, trastuzumab, and insulin glargine in Europe. Um, our portfolio of biosimilars uh, continue to gain traction, as I mentioned. And what is more important is that we've actually addressed the needs of nearly 2 million patients in FY19 globally. Um, I also believe that, uh, you know, we have done ex that our, uh, you know, the, the next fiscal also augurs well for us in terms of all the approvals that we've got and we expect to also launch Trastuzumab within this calendar year. So that's going to be a big opportunity for Biocon uh, going forward. We also announced the appointment of uh, a CEO for our Biocon Biologics business. Christian Hammersher comes with uh, a huge amount of experience uh, in big pharma and is very familiar with the business landscape in Asia Pacific, Europe and even US. So I think uh, this is a very important uh, um, journey that we are on, embarking on in biologics where we uh, want to see ourselves as a very significant player uh, in, 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 in the biologics business globally. Small Molecules also has, you know, delivered a very strong set of numbers, 1,773 crores. Uh, the generics formulation business is also poised for very strong growth in FY20. Our novel biologics are on track. We have just set up a Boston-based subsidiary called Baikara Therapeutics, which will actually focus on the fusion antibody programs that we have started developing. And this is a very exciting opportunity for Biocon as we enter into the very exciting field of immuno-oncology and novel uh, bispecific uh, you know, antibodies uh, to address this, this growing opportunity uh, in, in, in novel molecules. Branded formulations business has been led by Insugen Basilog um, and uh, we expect that, uh, you know, CanMab and other products will also support this business in FY20. All in all, I would like to provide you with a very, prom you know, optimistic outlook by saying that we expect to move into FY20 on this very strong optimistic note. Uh, that our, uh, you know, biologics businesses have started uh, monetizing the investments that we have made in developing these very important molecules. And we expect to uh, garner good growth. Uh, we expect to continue with this growth momentum. We expect to sustain this these core margins, uh, despite the fact that uh, our R&D spends are going to increase. Uh, our depreciation is also going to increase, but we expect that we will be able to uh, deliver and maintain uh, good uh, growth levels at a good margin level. And this is where I will stop and open it up to question and answers. Thank you.